I know it's weird. It's 2019. We're talking CDs. Yes, we are. And why are we talking CDs? Because they sell for lots of money. And I like to teach people how to make money on it. And when times come like this, where my good friends Rick and Craig have a whole bunch of them to sell, I said, all right, let me help you sort them out. And I thought, duh, let's sort them out uh, on YouTubes. On the YouTubes. On the YouTubes. <laughs> That way other people can learn, too, because I did it once for my mom with her cassettes, and everyone was like, wait, you're going too fast. And they were common bands, but not everyone knows common bands. My mom's well aware of who um, Bare Naked Ladies is now, because she's seen them, but she thought they were a heavy metal band when she first found them. So, I'm trying to. What are you whispering? Oh, uh, I, I because I couldn't get into the chat, I had my phone, so I started hearing you in double. Oh. And so I'm Rick was like, like, turn your phone off. I said, I'm trying to turn my phone off. <laughs> the point is move. So uh, real quick, I want to share a picture uh, that um, I shipped out four CDs today and I'll show you what I paid and what they sold for just to demonstrate, in case you're new to this, demonstrate what uh, kind of money is to be made in flipping CDs. Now I do sell a ton of crazy ones, $140, $100, $70. Uh, these are more on the normal side, but... Uh, still all good flips, especially for the money involved. So here they are. These are the ones sent out today. That Walt Disney World one, I paid $1.99 saver, sold for $35. Bucks. Dean Martin, I paid 5 bucks at a big record store in LA, sold for $18. Bucks. Frank and Joe show, who I don't know who they are. <laughs> it was sealed at Savers for 2 bucks. I'm like, hell yeah, sold it for $20. And uh, Bobby Rush, someone else I don't know. I don't remember where I bought that by that kind of generic five dollar tag, but I sold it for thirty bucks. Were so, most of those sales on uh, these, Amazon? these are on Amazon this morning? Uh, but we're talking uh, fourteen dollars turned into one hundred and three bucks. So, uh, and and the do. joyous thing is they're all the same size and shape. So when you learn how to ship one, you've learned how to ship them all. There is and, an asterisk. There are some box sets and some doubles, but for the most part, they're this size. And for anybody who's in Canada, we actually can ship those using. I, we, ha mail. We, <laughs> we actually can ship those letter mail uh, with just a couple of stamps. We don't get tracking on them, but we don't have to do like shipping into the states. It doesn't end up costing you ten dollars. You can just do letter mail for like three bucks. Nice. So all right, so uh, Craig and Rick have acquired quite a bit of CDs, and they sent me some pictures, and I already figured out the categories. But they told me that <laughs> this is box number one. These CDs have been looked up and they're really not worth it by themselves. And so it's going to be better to break them down in two this categories. <laughs> well, hey, no, let me get the other 17. So the thing is, Jason, is that, like we're learning from you on how to do this. And one of the things that we do sometimes and do badly at other times is we will grab something because as you've and we're getting it more and more into our head as you sort of said you look at something and go oh my god it's it's britney spears everybody must want britney spears because it's like and then it's like no it's everywhere so it yep. doesn't have a value to it so sometimes we might not think about opening our amazon seller app or sometimes we might not think about going to like online to check it or sometimes we're just like at a garage sale where you don't want to pull out in a garage it's when you're sitting quarter, with one, yeah, one yeah. person who's sitting there and it's like a quarter or 50 cents. So it's like, oh yeah, we'll just take them. We're not going to go, hey, I've seen people do that, which it bugs me. Just like, creep, it creeps me out. It's like, you're oh, nice, and they're cannon. the nice woman sitting in her garage and then there's somebody sitting, comes into her garage and starts doing this. It's like, no, that just go away. <laughs> they're, they're a dime. Buy them, figure it out. If it's less than a latte, come on. Like, now look, when I sold the uh, Adventures in Babysitting soundtrack last week and I showed it on Thrifty Business, I paid 50 bucks for it. Yeah. You're absolutely going to scan that one and figure it out. But I looked and it was selling for 110 on eBay and 140 on Amazon. So even at 50 bucks, there's room to make some good money. And if you have a rewards credit card, you get your bonus miles. And so I got my 50 miles and I was able I'm able to sell on Amazon, so I cleared 67 profit. Yeah. Nice. No, and we do have a lot that Rick's looked up and that he's listing properly and that they have good good returns on them. And we've had quite a few where we've done like well over the returns for your class, like just with, with like one, 
CD by learning yeah. how to, to look at that sort of thing. But we do end up with ones where we either bought them in bulk or we didn't think too much about them or we thought it was something that like, I think there's one sitting right there, for example. I literally bought this a day ago um, for a buck because I grabbed it thinking, I, I didn't look at my phone. I was just like scooting by at a garage sale and I found this. It's a great big town. Bear down, Chicago Bears, and it's wow. a wow. Right, hold that. Different. I'm going to scan it. So hold that. And modern technology. I can scan it right from Canada. Let me make him a little bit bigger. Let me take off. There we go. So let me open up my app. Boom! It's already it's already read it. What? What? You <laughs> scanned it from? <laughs> so the rank is four point one million. Not the best rank. Yeah, there are three on there. Did I see yours was sealed? Yes. Yeah. So on Amazon right now, there's a new for 24, uh, very good for 20, and a very good for 17. But the That's new for 24, the they only have 90% positive feedback. That's not a good number. So the interesting thing in that is it didn't show because we're in Canada, it we see Amazon.ca on our seller app. Right. So we don't see the dot com and we're gated into the US, but we're not gated in Canada. And there is no UP. So this didn't show up in Canada, but probably reason why it's like, why would anybody in Canada have a Chicago Bears CD? Well, somebody did because I bought it, but I could only look it up on eBay and found on eBay, they were selling for four or five or six dollars. So with the listing and everything, it's just like, that's kind of one of the things that goes into this pile now that sort of like are not necessarily worth trying to spend the extra time because on eBay, it's not as easy to list as it is on Amazon. So, uh, Jennifer, I, I forget where you live, but I'm coming. I'm coming, and I'm scanning. I'm just going to stand there, and I'm going to scan the whole time. So, Mark, uh, J Must Kill Trivia Night was music, uh, knowledge of music. I'll tell you a quick story that we'll get into sorting these out. We were on a cruise with about 20 friends and family of the Southern Caribbean where you had to fly to Puerto Rico and then out of Puerto Rico. We all went to Puerto Rico for the weekend. We were drinking pina coladas at every place that said they invented it because there's more than one. Having a grand old time. And we got on the boat. The boat took off. They opened the casino. We all headed down to the casino to gamble. And I started coughing and I couldn't stop. And I ended up getting a viral infection. I pretty much never left the boat for a week. All the family and friends went out. So when they would come back, the only thing I wanted to do because I was so sick was play trivia every day. So we played trivia every day. And we crushed it because we our my whole family and friends are just amazing at it. And so on the last day we're playing, the question was, which company, blah, blah, blah. And the answer was Anheuser-Busch. So the team that was closest to us in terms of maybe winning, they said Budweiser. And the guy hosting the trivia said, yeah, I'll give it to you. And I said, no way. The question was, what company? And And the team turned around and looked at me and they went, You've won everything. <laughs> and I said, and I'm going to win tonight too. The correct answer is Anheuser-Busch. You do not get a point for Budweiser. <laughs> I love right. it. Peggy's like, we were awesome. <laughs> you normally are, Peggy, so it's just added to it. <laughs> I, have all the, I have all the little dumb plastic carnival trophies to prove it. <laughs> all right, Western North Carolina. I don't know if I'm ever going to be in Western North Carolina, but Jennifer, if I'm in that area, I'm coming scan with you. We're going to do this. All right. So we're going to break these down into lots. To list a bunch of CDs singularly that are worth two or three bucks is a big waste of your time unless, unless you are brand new and you need to build up your sales or if you've got a couple bad marks like uh, some bad percentages of maybe item not as described or you got a negative or two on feedback. If you knock out a bunch of $3 CDs, you're going to fix your percentages. But that's the only time to do it. New and when you need to fix something. Don't waste your time listing two and three dollar CDs by themselves. But a nice lot will really do well. And so Craig's going to hold them up, and uh, Rick's going to commentate from off camera, and we're going to put them into groupings. I looked at the pictures one, two, three, four. I got six groupings, and some that don't make any of the groupings based on your, what I've seen. <laughs> I didn't I'm not sure what that says about our buying strategy. <laughs> but you said you had a couple hundred more, so we will hope. hope they will go into another category. Yeah, and hopefully one. it wasn't one of our personal CDs that you're going, who the hell would have bought this? It's like, okay. I will say there's one artist I don't know. I even I even Googled him and I still don't know who he is. So we'll get to that. Yay. <laughs> All right. Hit me. What you got? I guess we're doing it in what? The alphabetical order that Rick showed you to. Oh, right? it, it's fine. 
So I saw Annie, and I don't see much else how uh, that goes with her. However, I do think let's do a girls' rock pile. Okay. Well, actually, that's the seventh one. Right, I gotta get a piece of paper. Girls' rock. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna do '90s alternative rock, and that's gonna be that's live. Yeah, and this shows you how much I know. I was going, "Who's live? I could, like, which live band is this?" It's like it's the band is live. Pain, pain lives down by the riverside. That was, big hit. <laughs> that was their big hit. Google it later. You'll be like, oh, I know that song. Uh, so AFI is a moody piece of shit band that I had the mispleasure of doing an in-store with, and I threw them out of the store. <laughs> so they're, they're, uh, um, we're going to go uh, 2000. Uh, I saw you had a couple. Let's do those AFIs together. Yeah, because they really didn't go with anything they're else. Because right. they're they're just they're moody. I wore all I bought all my clothes at Hot Topic, and uh, my mom didn't love me enough. That's AFI. <laughs> what did you what say the you live was? Nineties uh, alt rock. Nineties alt rock. Yep. I know this isn't nineties alt rock. Yep. So uh, we're gonna do a shitty pop category. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said. Will we be labeling it that way on eBay? No, no, but you're going to, you know, pop grouping. So, but I call it shitty pop lovingly because I've seen most of these concerts. So that's our first one into the shitty pop category. Oh, yeah, God. and I don't know How one. How big has been am I going to need for those? I don't know one song. You don't know one Backstreet Boys song? I don't know one song on that Backstreet Boys. Oh, oh on that one. Okay, that yeah. One. I got to figure out. See, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I keep holding it up to the wrong space. So I just, I'll get used to I, it. It'll be our 90s alt rock. Ben folds five. Did you have two or three of those? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> two, I think. Another Ben folds five. And then that's yeah. an outcast. So um let's put the Ben folds five. Let's do a let's do a twosome of the Ben folds five. So that'll go as a twosome. He's, kind of, he's all rock, but he plays a piano. So it, it, the lead the lead instrument is a piano and not a guitar. So it doesn't really fit. So that kind of thing, when you at least at that place, if they happen to be three or four dollar CDs, and we put the two of them together and throw them in for ten, it's like an easy, an easier yeah, five dollar sale than and, one. And Ben's on tour right now with Cake, so people who are like, "Oh man, I remember Ben Folds. I need some CDs," because that's what happens. Which Kate? No, Kate. No, Kate. I heard Kate. Cake. Yes. Middleton. He's, he's, they're on tour with Kate Middleton. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do a hip hop uh, hip hop rap group. The Outcast. And this is Blink One. Oh, that's going to be uh, Pop Punk. Pop Punk. Okay. Yep. So hip hop and pop punk. So you'll see, the, those who are watching right now are going to see what Rick did was he alphabetized these. So I'm just grabbing them. That's why you're going to see if there are some. Luckily, they're in the same order. So, but that's why you go from Backstreet Boys to pop punk. Yep. Uh, Bush. The so Bush is uh, going to be your 90s alt rock. Bush. 90s alt. Same. <laughs> Brand new Deja Etendu. Who's the band? Oh, brand new. Brand new. Oh. <laughs> I thought okay, you just pulled a live on live TV. <laughs> yeah. so well, since you prefaced it without showing like brand new, I thought you were showing me a brand new. Song. No, I'm just reading. <laughs> so uh br brand new goes with uh the pop punk. Sorry. Really? Yep. I don't know who they are, so again. I uh, still have to taste so, of a 12 year old. See, we went to a last night, and the girl in front of me was nine years old. Oh no! <laughs> Some of these too. I'm looking at them, and I'm even troubled to understand: is this group Chevelle and the the CD Venicera, or is the group Venicera yeah, and the CD Chevelle? Chevelle? And that's going to be our 2000s rock. Which one is the group? Chevelle. <laughs> okay. I'm a disco queen. I'm sorry. It's like. That's I am here, brother. That's why I'm I here. Did I did not even know there was an AFM radio till I was 17. So, uh, Britney Spears, Circus. Of course, we go into our shitty pop uh, category. Yep. Charlotte Church. Now, so, that's the Christmas one. <clears throat> and that's the only Christmas one I saw. So, put that one off to the side. We have yeah, a. Oh, no. no. Wait, was that a Christmas one? Yeah. It's yeah. Dream a Dream and, yeah, Oh Come All You Faithful and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's our Christmas one. Off to the side. Okay.
This dashboard confessional. So that's 2000s uh, rock. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> We're both in the same boat. Is Creed the name of the person? Is he Frank Creed? And he's in my own prison. Yes. So I know so that here's I know a little, Here's a little bonus tip. That is the Creed uh, on the major label. That was our major label release. They did release this album on a small label beforehand. This The one you have is on Wind Up. If you find the one, I forget what label's on, but it's not Wind Up. The one on not Wind Up is worth a ton of money. That one's going to be our 90s alt rock. Cranberries. Chicks who rock. Girl rock. Collective Soul. 90s alt rock. Coldplay. <laughs> Set Coldplay to the side right now. I'm not sure what we're going to do with them. Oh, I see what we're going to do them, but I don't know what the category is going to be called. So... So we'll do this little stack, and then there's some people asking some questions. So I thought, yeah. You might so we'll get through this. This the again the features some kind of salvation. Oh, you know, I didn't see that in the picture. I don't know them. So hold on, you stumped me on one. Oh, that, that wasn't the one I didn't know. Uh, so let me see that, and that's where Google comes in handy. And your thingy, your scanning so, thingy. Some kind of. I would play the song, but then you know, it was uh, there. We go. Some kind of salvation is a full, full length album. Tennessee oh, bass. I just found in uh, tiny little letters on the bottom here. Two thousand. Well, two thousand nine. Kings of Leon bug music. <laughs> so Kings of Leon is uh, like an indie rock band. So let's do an indie rock group. And here, here's just for you. You'll probably know the features are Mark Bond, Roger Dabbs, Roland Haas, and Matthew Pelham. Do you know who those people are? I do not. They're the they're who the features are. Okay, so let's do like an indie rock kind of thing. Okay. Indie. Indie. The Family Values Tour, which is Stone. Yep, so that'll be Bible. like corn and Limbiscuit and stuff. That'll yep. go with our uh we're gonna do uh 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 90s white boy rock rap category. <laughs> so that'll be the start of that. 90s white boy. Rock rap. Yep. I'm gonna run out of paper. Sorry, Eve. Eve six. Yeah, the Australian uh, three piece. Uh, they will go in your '90s alt rock. Dink. Oh, DMX. <laughs> DMX. <laughs> rap. Yeah, we'll go on your hip hop. Yeah. The Deftones. Saturday Night West. Wrist. Yeah, that would go in your '90s alt rock. And plans by Death Cab for Cutie. That'll go on your 2000s uh, so, rock. Here's a perfect example, Jason. With something like this, you can see that this case is a little scuffed up. But because this is going into lots, we shouldn't think about having to try and recase something like that, right? We no, yeah, when you do lots, I mean, if the cases are so broken, they're falling apart. Not broken, but scuffed little up. Little scuffs, no big deal. So I didn't know. Did you want to peek at some of the questions yeah. that some of the people were having? I'm going to flip yeah. spaces with Rick and let him do something. Cranberries, Christine, could be 90s all rock, but we're doing a, a, a chicks rock category. And I think that'll be a good a good thing for the chicks rock. Oh. Uh, I would never call Coldplay Christian music, by the way. Uh, what else? Would Xmas be bundled like country Xmas, pop Xmas, et cetera, or just all Xmas? No. Now, you got to be a little specific. And here's what I meant to preface at the beginning of this, and I kind of forgot. We got so talking about things. Um, there are very few people in the world like me. And what I mean is I've seen Marilyn Manson in concert in the same week I've seen Bette Midler in concert. Most people will not go buy a CD collection with Bette Midler and Marilyn Manson. I would, but I'm a freak. So that's why we want to break these down into categories that people would actually buy. Because I see categories of cassettes and CDs. Uh, you know, someone will have like the Commodores with Madonna, with Run DMC, where I like all three of those bands, but that's not really, they don't go together. Yeah, it's hard You're to them. are going to buy those. So, all right, my mom's with you. <laughs> corn. Kings of Leon just did a free concert this week. 
Uh, are the dogs behind you for sale? It must be you because I, I only have Betty Page behind me. Well, we haven't listed them yet. Their dog patch is in a frame. So <clears throat> they might be loved by Christians, but yeah, you would never put Coldplay in a Christian grouping. There are plenty of religious bands, and actually some I like. Uh, Thousand Foot Crutch is a religious band that I didn't know was religious, but they were, my, that, they were the reason I actually bought my first iPod. Um, but uh, you put you put them in if it's specifically for Christian music. All right, what you got there? Okay, boys to men. So, uh, wait, is that a single? No. Uh, it's got four songs on it. So that would be a single. Is it a promo? Flip it around, please. Yeah, so that's a single. I, I, I hate to call boys to men shitty pop, but put that with the uh, the pop. I don't pop. think that's where I was gonna go. Shitty pop. Yeah. James Blunt. So James Blunt's Blunt. like, we're going to put James Blunt with Coldplay, and I see something else, we're going to stick with that group. It's kind of weepy guy rock. Cold. Although I do love Coldplay. I know, but I... So what was Coldplay in? Because we just got piles now, so I've got piles with yeah. pictures so on. So Coldplay is going to be kind of like guys with feelings. There we go. <laughs> we got a new one now. <laughs> Well, there's 90s white boy rap thingies. No. Uh, Gillette, On the Attack, a 20 Fingers production. Yeah, I think she's like a girl rapper that went nowhere. Uh, let me look her up real quick. I forgot all about her. Uh, on the Attack. That's too funny. There we go. Uh, yep, she's a rapper, so put her in the hip-hop. Okay. Francis the Mule. Uh, Mars the Volta. Mute. Is the band. Francis the Mute. Mars Volta is the band, right? I can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it okay. is. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's in a font you can't read. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That font you cannot read. So Mars Volta is going to be our 2000s rock. Okay. Foo Fighters. 2000s rock, even though that might have come out in the 90s, but we're going to focus on them on the 2000s. Franz Ferdinand. Uh, 90s alt rock. Flowbots. Uh, Flowbots. Yeah, I looked at my brother because I couldn't remember Flowbots. Flowbots. Uh, they are, looks to be white boy rap. Hold on. Alternative hip hop, alternative rock. 2005, and eh, they probably wouldn't go with our white boy rap then. Put them in 2000s rock. Sorry, Craig is giving me stage direction. We have this. It looks. Wait, like is that autographed? It looks like it could be. Oh, it sure is. So that should definitely not be in the groupings. That should be listed all by itself. But here's your little fun side fact. That brand used to be called River Phoenix until River Phoenix's family sued them and they changed their name to Phoenix TX. Okay. So would you put something like that in the comments on it? Uh, that they used to be called River Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, I would put that in the add a category in the drop downs, uh, you know, item specifics. Yeah. And it was called, it was River and then F-E-N-I-X, just like that. So oh, I would I actually it. put that. But yeah, that can be listed by itself. I'm guessing like 20, 25 bucks being oh, autographed. Okay, cool. I've been getting too close again. Uh, Jewel. Yeah, it's our chicks who rock. Jay-Z, probably 90s. Yeah, just our hip, we're just doing a hip hop pile so with DMX. Uh, hip hop, yep. Incubus. 90s alt rock. Corn. Corn. Corn will go in our white boys rock rappy thing there. Way over there. And the the other hives? Oh, the hives is 90 alt rock. I can't read that one. Hate, but hate reads are be our heavier Look stuff. Forward. So let's do a, a heavy metal type category because I know other things we're going to stick in there. Okay. Ben Harper, the gun. Both sides. Ben Harper is 90s alt rock. Eh, here's the 2000s. Hold on. Let me see what Ben started. I'm not a big Ben fan. I've seen him once. I'm like, Meh. when did Ben start? Yeah, 90s. Goldfinger. 
So they were ska from the 90s, one of Stacy's favorite bands, fun side note. And man, I don't see much else to put with Goldfinger. Set that to the side right now on its own. They look like this is to me. I would look at that. You gotta hold it up. That right. to me just looks heavy metal. But it isn't. No. It's total, okay. it's total, well, you know, well, it's older than ska. It's older, it's like ska pop punk, but it's it's older, so it doesn't really go with them the modern. Well, it pop doesn't necessarily pop. mean that what you're looking at is what you can recognize right. it to be oh, okay again this is all learning for people who like me who are like who who what good old even, North, um, even though North. she doesn't really rock rock we'll put it in our chicks who rock uh grouping girl rock girl rock mike oldfield so everyone knows mike oldfield whether they think they do or not because his song tubular bells is the theme to halloween um we don't really have anything else that goes with Mike Oldfield. He was one of the ones that just sits by. Kind of like the Charlotte Church Christmas. There really is nothing that goes with Mike Oldfield as of yet. Okay. Lamb of God. So that's our heavy stuff that goes with hate breed, our heavy metal category. Craig, that's heavy metal. Uh, we have a couple more corn. Yep, so put those with our white boys, rocky, rappy stuff. Okay. Keen. Hopes and fears. So Keen's going to go with our James Blunt, Coldplay, you know, boys with feelings kind of thing. Okay. Give me a sec. Yep. Er, <laughs> er. I think that's it. Ah, no, Craig's out of the room doing something. Spit. No, it's Kitty. <laughs> Kitty. Kitty spit. Kitty was a great uh, hard rock band in the 90s. We'll put that with the all. Uh, put Kitty with the hate breed. Uh, they'll, they'll go better with hate breed, the, the heavy metal pile, because they're they're hard. Where'd you put the heavy metal stuff, Craigie? That's the hate okay. breed. And what else? We just threw someone else in there. Lamb of God? Yeah, Lamb of God. Yep, yeah, those go together well. Letters to Cleo. Aurora so that's our chick, Chicks Who Rock. Hmm? Chicks Who Rock? Yep. Lincoln Park. That'll be our 90s. Uh, um, no, oh. put that with the uh, corn, limp biscuity, nine, white boys rap rock. Okay. Yeah, one more, and then we're going to switch out. And then little fun fact to go back to the letters to Cleo. They're the band playing on top of the school at the end of 10 Things I Hate About You. One of the most okay. awesome. Well, so that goes to the Chinese right? white boys rap rock with corn. Okay. Now Craig's gonna come back in here. Now it's time for a special guest. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm Lynn Mast from <laughs> the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. And I, too, know nothing about CD. Oh, my hat. Where'd my hat go? I know nothing about CDs either. I don't know who does them. I don't know what they are. I can't <laughs> tell if live is dead or if dead is live. So now I look a little bit like... The guy who used to be in the middle of Hollywood Square. <laughs> That's some small glasses there. Bruce, uh, Bruce Valanche with a brown out wig. <laughs> so. Oh, I was going to say, you look like Paul Lynn? I don't think so. No, no, Bruce Valanche in the Whoopi Goldberg version. So here's some more CDs brought to you by Lynn Mass from the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. I haven't got my real glasses on, so Rick's right, going to so head 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 head. Go back. And Pantera uh, goes with our heavy metal grouping of like Hate Breed and Kitty. Panera Kitty. Bread. Yep. That's who they named the bread company after. Offspring is uh, pop punk, so I put those with the pop punk. Something I will never have. Offspring. Yeah, put all those. Well, you know, you got three offspring. Another offspring. I just had a child, a second child. Old, oh, I had another group. one. There's three. I have three offspring. Right, who, would, on. who would know? No one would adopt them. That would be for sure. Oh, hold on. I'm going to see if lots of three offspring CDs sell. We might just do those of their own grouping. Hold on a sec. Let's see here. What's this? 
All right, so you could get ten bucks for those three offsprings. Maybe, maybe if run you those. could sell three of your offsprings for ten dollars, would you not? I would. I'm Lynn Mass from the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. Boy, there goes my hat again. Why? Why I didn't assume this is what was happening is beyond me. Ow. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just a guest. Where's the, the where's the camera? Yeah. No. I'm just a girl who can't say no. <laughs> I don't even know that album cover. What is that one? That, that one has me stumped. I don't know. It looks kind of like the thing nine from... Nine Inch Nails, Year oh, Zero. Oh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, I was going to say Nine Inch Nails, but I didn't know that cover. Uh, yeah. Let's put them... Even though that's a CD from the 2000s... Put them with the, the 2000s rock. And I am Canadian. Otherwise, this exact thing, I would be breaking it in... Oh, I just did. Sorry. This is Nickelback. <laughs> I like uh, Nickelback. Oops. <laughs> Lynn, how could you? Uh, 90s alt rock. I don't know what they say. You've got uh, girl, 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 girl who rock. rock. Like Meryl Lynn. Lynch? Meryl <laughs> Streep? Meryl who? That's Madonna. Upside down oh, Madonna. Madonna. Here, put these on. Take these on. No, I'll put these on here. There. <laughs> oh, I can see now. Is Madonna I girl rock? Yes, Madonna's definitely girl rock. <laughs> this Ooh. is like me. Ludacris. <laughs> yes, very much so. Ludacris will definitely be our hip-hop category. And the Long Island Dub All-Stars. Dub. Beach. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dabbing, isn't it? Not dubbing. I'm getting moist. I mean, sweaty. So I'm going to go and we'll let Rick come back. Remember, where's my thing? There behind you. I have to put my last ad thing on here. So don't forget. Thank you from Lynn Mass's North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. Some people have said I haven't been around and they thought I was dead. No, I'm still alive. But I've gone for now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I I was I have not seen Lynn in so long that uh, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mucho apologies. All right, so the Long Island Dub All Stars will be in our '90s alt rock. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vitology. That'd be Pearl Jam. That'd be '90s alt rock. Hold, hold, please. We have a question from Christine. Nine Inch Nails wouldn't be punk. No, Nine Inch Nails are far from punk. You know, Trent. Trent also writes scores for movies like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and games like Doom. He his shit is deep and intricate. You know, punk is very much three chords, three minutes, and we're out. Trent will have, I think, in that CD too. Trent will have like a nine minute, like sweeping epic song with no lyrics. So definitely not punk. Okay, his early stuff was way more hardcore. Like the first singles were down in it. Uh, the first single was down in it, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, yeah, definitely not punk. So we have punk. Oh, Rama. Yeah, so that'll go in our pop punk category. Pop punk, crazy. Radiohead. Uh, put that with our weepy boys category. Mm -hmm. So Keen and Coldplay and stuff. That is the weepiest of the boys right there. Chili Peppers. 90s alt rock. Chili Peppers. Yeah, 90s alt rock. Chili Peppers. So what do you got? Three Chili Peppers there, Rick? Yes. All right. So let me put three, uh, you know, like we did with the um, offspring. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Lot of three. Seniors. Now, it doesn't really matter which three for the most part because they've all sold millions. So I just want to see. If uh, lots of three chili pepper cells, so let's call the solds. All right, so a lot of three sold for nine bucks, eight bucks, 13 bucks. You could probably get 13 bucks for those three. Okay. So Slip that'd be a good threesome just to pull off by itself. Okay. Slipknot. Slipknot, one of my all time favorite bands that'll go in our heavy metal uh, category with Hate Breed and Kitty. Okay. Sorry. Uh, simple plan. Uh, that'll be our pop punk. Pop punk is over there, Peggy. 
So yes, Weeby yeah. Boys, Chris, is called emo, but but in this case, you know, Keen is an emo, uh, James Blunt is an emo, but they are definitely Weeby Boys. And Jenny wants to know what size lot seems to sell the best. It doesn't. There is no. There is no one thing. You'll see a lot of three. You'll see a lot of two hundred. All right. So silver chairs are nineties alt rock. I didn't see what they are. We have two of them. They're so, they're both silver chair. Okay, yeah. Put those both. The, both diorama, the other is uh, frog stone. Yeah. That the frog stone was our first one. Maybe we. They came like out. They were teenagers. Should we do like maybe 10 more, Jason, and then sort of say, look at what we got in the piles? Uh, sure. Because yeah. we could go on for hours. <laughs> Come on, let's, we'll finish half of this. Snow Patrol. Uh, put those with Keen and, you know, Coldplay. The, and, uh... I don't know what the, yeah. And then Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray. So Sugar Ray is a weird one because... When their out when their song Fly came out, everyone expected them to be like that. Early Sugar Ray is very much like punk, pop punk. And then they started to, to drift into the hey, let's make radio hits. So this was the this was the album with the big radio hit. They still had a little bit of edge to them, and then the edge the edge was over. So put that in our 90s alt rock. 90s alt. Sorry, I've, I've lost who that goes to. Okay. So I'll put Ramones in straight up punk, not pop punk. Pop, pop punk is a it was a 90s thing. So Ramones would definitely go into punk rock with things like Sex Pistols, Clash, Television, um, Circle Jerks. Those would all go in just regular old punk. Static X? Yeah, uh, he passed away. Wayne Static was lead singer. If you've never seen Static X when we're done here, Google Wayne Static. He had so much hair, and he would spike it all up like you would never believe it. Uh, it must have taken him an hour just to do his hair every day. So put him with our metal category, and I know I think he had two of those. So I guess he didn't ever visit the North Shore Academy of Beauty Culture. No, that's <laughs> Outcast. So that's a two CD Outcast. Big Boys on one side, Andre Three Thousand is on the other side. Mm -hmm. So if you flip it over, you'll see Andre. Oh no, me not. Uh, if you open the thing, you'll see Andre. Uh, so put that in our hip-hop category. Sorry. So Aaron said... Uh, there it is. <laughs> so Aaron said Wayne died. Yeah, Wayne died a long time ago. Wayne Static. Wayne died in 2014. He's been dead for five years. So Aaron, you're about five years behind on music, uh, music news. Okay. We have Soundgarden. So Soundgarden will go in our 90s alt-rock. Yeah. We've got a lot of 90s alt rock here. Smash Mouth. Oh, yeah. And 90s alt rock. This is one of those double album or double CDs. Yep. Melancholy, Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins. That was before, that was right before he turned into a crazy maniac when making music. Uh, so put that, that's a great album. Put that in 90s alt rock. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, more Static X. How many static X's did you have? Two. Okay. Yeah, for the gold for the metal group in there. Uh, we have Sting. We really don't have anything that Sting would go into. Okay. Set him off to the side, yeah. Based on the categories you made, nothing really stings. Stone Sour. All right. So let's see in the chat who knows who Stone Sour is because the lead singer of Stone Sour is also lead singer of a band we've already discussed and seen their CD tonight. I'm going to guess you two guys don't know. <laughs> I know nothing. Sorry, no. I'm just was... floating Wait, in space with Peggy, this stone Peggy song. knows. <laughs> so this lead singer, I think he has like four bands. So talk about having to get the music out of you. So let's see if anyone in the chat knows. While we're waiting, before we move on, Mark said, would you put movie titles and listings? Like I know the new Spider-Man using some of the Ramones songs. Well, yeah, if you're if you're selling a soundtrack, absolutely. If you're selling a Ramones CD and they haven't used that song in Spider-Man, well, they've also used that Ramones song in 50 other things, so there's no real need to put Spider-Man in. Jennifer's got it. So Corey Taylor, lead singer of Slipknot, is also the lead singer of Stone Sour. He does some acoustic stuff with his buddy Jason, and Stacy and I saw him. They came out, they, he, had a, he put a bar band together, they came out dressed like Elvis in the 70s jumpsuits and played only 80s cover tunes. So here's the lead singer of Slipknot dressed like Elvis playing 80s cover tunes. 
outside in the summertime at the Hard Rock Pool. It was like 107 degrees, and they never took off the polyester jumpsuits. I gave them oh, all the credit wow. in the world. We were in tank tops and swim trunks in the pool, and we were hot. That's wow. how hot it was. So uh, put that with the – even though it's softer than Slipknot, put that in the heavy metal grouping with Slipknot and Hate Breed and stuff. Okay. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Yep, so that's our 90s alt rock. The, so here's a little side fun note. The first chain of CD stores I worked for, the I worked for a husband and wife. The wife's first boyfriend that she made out with was the lead singer Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> they went to high school together. Well, this looks like it's Stone Temple Pilots as well. Yep. Okay, so that'll yep. go with. Yep. And we're going to swap one more time, and we've got like 10 left. Cool. So what do you suggest, Jason, when you've got things like that? Like you're you're such a an expert when it comes to a lot of these things where you're looking at something going, oh, this is so-and-so or side so, stone sour is this. Is there a way for us to think about looking up to group things other than badly grouping them? Like I put stone sour in with things that say sweet because I want a sweet and sour CD lot. Like what? So, I would do that. I personally, I would put the sweet and stone sour. <laughs> So if you know if you don't have me on your YouTube, you know on your YouTube's helping you out. Oh, here let's show this real quick. There is Wayne Static's hair, <laughs> and look how long his beard was too. But what I was going to show you is, you know, Wikipedia would be a good jumping-off point because right here they will do genres. Now we kind of dumbed it down. As, you know, Static X was called new metal, industrial metal. So we're just putting it in a metal category. But at least you can get a jumping off point. So if you not have a clue who Stone Sour is, you go to Wikipedia, you will learn the two things you need to learn. You will learn what kind of music they are. So Stone Sour is alternative metal or hard rock. And it will tell you that it's Corey Taylor. When you click on to Corey Taylor, you'll say, oh, Corey Taylor is a lead singer of Slipknot also. So Wikipedia, although there is wrong information on Wikipedia, it's a great jumping off point to at least put you in the right direction if I'm not cooing in your ear on what to do. That, no, that's a that's an amazing tip because I just looked at that and went, oh, okay. I don't know what NU metal is. Like I saw it said new metal and this metal and this metal. But if I was looking at that, at least I could go, okay, I know this is a metal group. So if I was going to try and put things together without necessarily saying 90s metal or 2000, I could at least go, okay, I'm going to put a listing now of things I've got. These five people are metal groups of some form. Yep. And so no new metal people. was, you know, we had regular heavy metal, which would be things like Metallica and Iron Maiden. And then new metal, were, they were all had the same kind of feel. So it was corn and Limp Bizkit, kind of what I'm calling the rap metal, because they had all these chunky guitars in every band. And like with anything, you know, one boy band hits, and all of a sudden every record label has 20 boy bands signed. Same thing. New metal started hitting with the chunky guitars, and we're kind of singing, we're kind of screaming, we're kind of white boy rapping, and then 10,000 bands came out. And I happen to like all that new metal, and so my friends who like traditional heavy metal, they would give me shit, and I'm like, I don't care. I like Limp Bizkit. I like, I like uh, Nickelback. You just jerk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... Okay, let's go get through the last sort of 10 or 12. Tenacious D? So Tenacious D is one of them weird ones because it's uh, Kyle Glass and Jack Black, two comedians, uh, movie stars. They play acoustic guitars, but they rock out pretty hard on acoustic guitars. This album is phenomenal. We just saw them in concert not too long ago. I would put them with our the group with the Foo Fighters because that, that they attract some of the same crowd. Tea Party? Mm, I didn't see that in the picture. I have two tea parties there. Yeah, let me look at the tea party. I, I, I know the band, but I don't know the band. Uh, the tea party band. And hey, I'm just going to Wikipedia. Because at least give me, it might not be the most, uh, yeah, oh, they're Canadian. That's why I don't know. Just kidding. So Did I break uh, them like I did with Nickelback? <laughs> well, we'll put those in uh, 90s alt rock based on what I'm reading here. Uh, okay, again, this is one of those ones I'm not sure of. Sublime. Is it Sublime Live or yeah. Live by Sublime? It is Sublime. Sublime, uh, Sublime and the Long Beach Dub All Stars are kind of the same band. The lead singer Sublime died and uh, they were pretty much over. They came back as Sublime with Rome with a new lead singer. 
but uh, Sublime was an awesome. Uh, so put, put that in the 90s alt rock. And this is that rare, rare version. Um, it's one of those CDs you find that has no thing in the front. But thankfully, we can tell that uh, this is the, um, you can tell by the side, this is Sean Paul, who's a oh, famous okay. Canadian, and he did things by the Beastie Boys. So this is like one of those say, things where you just grab roll. something and someone, no, it's, this is one of those garage sale where you just grab stuff and it's like, cover missing, wrong CD, wrong flip, like, it's like, okay, well, that's where that goes, because it's like, do you, uh, here's a question for you, Jason, would you ever suggest buying a CD that you may find that's in terrible shape, but like a double CD or something, just to get the paper cover, like not the plastic piece, but to get the, the like, what are they, the J card or whatever it is, like on cassettes. Yeah. Uh, well, the J card would be if you had, a, that's a CD single. So that's just a regular booklet. Uh, probably not, unless it was the rare stuff, like a gold disc or something. Because I bought a double gold disc, um, uh, uh, Neil Diamond, and I looked at the first disc, and for some unknown reason, I didn't check the condition of disc two, and it was cracked, like cracked, and so it was worthless, but if someone needs the paperwork for that specific gold disc, that's the time when it would be worth it, but if you just found a Britney Spears, no, nah, it wouldn't right. be worth the difference. Okay, no, because it's kind of like... A few and far between. I think, I was thinking about it in the sense that, like, sometimes with game boards and things like that, with board games, you, or board games, you actually split up things and people try and find the other things. And in that case, I, somebody, I wouldn't try to sell the CD open. And I think somebody actually asked a question, it might have been Jenny, but somebody asked a question about they got a whole batch of heavy metal uh, CDs with no cases. So what would you do with something like that? Yeah, I mean, A, I wouldn't typically buy those, but B, you know, sometimes you buy, you know, you see them in the big booklets that we all used to have in the back of our cars. Yeah. And so if you have to find one of those, and even better if it's got the, um, a lot of people use put the cover behind it, you can sell those whole those whole books, but you can't split it out. It's just got to be the whole book. But if you just picked up a stack of CDs, it, it really be, wouldn't be worth your time. Um, I don't even know how this got into this mess, but the very best of Tony Christie. Yeah, that's who I didn't know. And I looked him up, and I still didn't know him based on what I was reading on Wikipedia. He had one hit song. Do you know him? No, never heard. And the fact that he's if this is his very best, <laughs> it's like, how many... Is this one of those things where it's like, the very, he just I'm going to market myself as the very best, and people are going to think I have 20 other CDs, but really, yeah. it's just like... It's Tony Christie live. Oh, people are buying it thinking it's live, singing about Tony now, Christie. No, uh, did you look that one up by itself to see if it's worthy? No, he can. I, I've got five more left or six more left. Here, so wait. He's, he's looking at us right now. Violent Family. Bring, bring, bring that back. Bring that back. Bring it back. I'm bringing it back. Is, oh, bar, is there a barcode? Yeah. All right. Put that up to the camera, please. <laughs> All right. Nope. Stop moving it. 575 used in oh. Canada. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right, flip it around. It's not clear enough to grab the barcode, but it will. No, I mean, uh, turn it over. It'll grab the cover, no problem. There we go. Boom. Ooh, ninety nine cents in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. It's not. The, it's, where would you the, categorize the very? See, uh, it had a rank. Oh. It had a rank on your phone, didn't it? Five hundred thirty-four thousand. So it says he's famous for his recording of the, "Is This the Way Amarillo." He was an English musician, singer, and actor, born in nineteen forty-three. Lived in Sheffield with his wife Sue. And I guess uh, he traveled a lot because the other thing on his very best is there. You go. Is this the way to Amarillo? And after he's gone there, he said, "Don't go down to Reno." <laughs> like. <laughs> It's just a, it's just him and his wife traveled around the states, and they went like. There's a couple other songs there. It's like it's nice to shop in Dallas, um, and uh, oh, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, oh oh, Las so, Vegas. I don't think that's even worthy. We have no groups that, and I don't think it's worthy of your time even. Oh God, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just babbling like an idiot. In good condition. I'll scavenge it and use it for. Something. All right, so uh, I love Violent Femmes and Weezer. Those will go in your '90s alt rock. Oh wait, bring that one back. Bring that one back. Weezer. The uh, Weezer Pinkerton. Uh, open it up, please.
And take out the C, please. No, no, yeah. See, there's a whole little map behind the CD kind of goes with the CD. This was kind of not technically a concept album, but they put this whole thing together. It tanked. Rivers Cuomo, the lead singer, was so distraught because their first album did so well that he kind of went into hiding. But in the years following, Pinkerton has got this great uh, following now. People really enjoy that album, but it did really shitty on the charts when it first came out. So on its own or? Yeah, and put it in the 90s alt rock. Uh, but uh, it, I, I think not all the all the uh, CDs had that map in the back. So oh, that okay. was still Weezer. Oh, you know what? I would do a, I would do a grouping of Weezer by itself then. Okay. All three. Oh, Weezer. So here's my quick, here's my quick Weezer story, and there's going to be an F word. So if you are offended by the F word, plug your ears for two seconds. We're at the Weezer concert in Long Beach. 16 years ago, and Stacy had to go to the bathroom, so I walked out with her. And Bob Saget had two young his two young kids, and each kid had a friend. So Bob Saget was just being a dad, you know, taking these like you know again we're at a concert with ten year olds, taking these four ten year olds out. Okay, boys go in that bathroom, girls go in that bathroom. Daddy, you'll be standing right here. So Bob wasn't being Bob Saget actor; he was being Bob Saget daddy. And all, while he's waiting for his children. I felt I actually felt bad for him. Bob Saget, no fucking way, dude. And all these drunk guys kept trying to hug him. And I'm just like, oh man, he's just trying to be a dad right now. And these drunks won't leave him alone. <laughs> but he also had one of the filthiest mouths and filthiest acts that oh, like, so very true. And I don't often feel bad for celebrities, but he was really trying to keep his eye on four ten year olds. And he was the only parent. Like he he drew the short straw. <laughs> Um, so here's one more from that pile, Z Zwan, Zwan, and that. Okay, we're, all right. So that's all right. Y'all know Corey Taylor was lead singer of uh, Stone Sour. Who's the lead singer of Zwan? Let's see how good you are, Jennifer, because I know you're my you're my rock chick in here. Mary, Mary Zwan. I know. Let's see if you guys know. I'm guessing you fellows don't know. No, I think. Well, he said it's Mary, Star of the Sea. That's what... <laughs> it's right on the disc. If anyone knows who the lead singer, I'm looking in the disc and I can't even figure out who it is. Boom! All right, Jeanette Heritage is our winner on that one. Oh, Billy Corgan, who's also the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkin. Smashing Pumpkin. So this is yep. so alt rock. That would go in the yeah. Uh, now there's a couple here that were just weirdos that we think we just don't know, and I think I've got a pretty good idea on what we could do with something like this. When you have a bunch of things that are like these guys, the planet pops, like from various years. So is that, Stones, is that Amp, Mac, American bands or English bands? These are all like big shiny. Uh, much music is the Canadian MTV. Okay, right. So before it it is now MTV Canada, but it used to be called Much Music. Um, so this is like Our Lady Peace. This is just they, so this was there every year. They did a big shiny tunes right. compilations. Some of these other ones are like Planet Pop. Is like it looks like oh my god! It, it, it's like that one where it's got like In Sync, Bath Street Boys, Pink, Ninety Eight Degrees, Bob. Yeah, so that all go very well with with the shitty pop category. That'd be a good that'd be a good lot with the with the Backstreet Boys. So yeah, so compilation. Like try and eat, like keep a bunch of them together because somebody wants them. They want them yeah. for like. Yeah. Um, That's a dance this was something that I don't. We didn't know what that was. So this was because again, it's one of those. I, I didn't scan the. But you decide the Warped Tour 2000 sampler. So put that with your pop punk category. Really. Yep. So something that's a sampler it doesn't have a, a value really to it at all, even though it's Some like will. that one was handed out by the thousands. So okay. That what one won't. Else you wanted to show. Okay. Yeah. So I think that well. So right now that's pretty well what we wanted to go through with that one cool. box of stuff. So now what we've ended up with is we have a stack of about seven or eight uh, things that we've got in the '90s, like. The 90s, we have a couple of singles that we're stuck with that we'll have to figure out what to do with. Like, this is the only one that ended up in indie rock. Okay. Um, we've got a big pile of about 25 or so plus in the 
90s. What's that pile right there, Rick? So girl rock, we got like six or so. So okay. what do you something like this? If you're because you'd have to eBay this kind of thing, right? You can't yep. Amazon it because it's a batch. So when you're looking at stuff like that, you look at, I guess the number one thing I would look at is weight, because even though it's media mail, I guess we would be sending it media mail. So would we be looking at stuff like that and just generically, would you ever auction something like this off or would yeah. you just put it yeah, at like- nothing, nothing good enough to auction. So you're gonna pick a price and all you're gonna do is the groupings we pick, you're gonna go look, okay, uh, 90s alt rock, a lot of CDs, and you'll see a bunch. And so try and find one in the same vein of yours in terms of how many. So if you see a lot of 100 and you've got 10, well, let's go find you know a lot of 10. So right. kind of based on that, because everything you have in, in the ones we went through tonight are very common and very commonplace. So that's why they're not worthy by themselves, but they are nice in little groups. And, you know, um, you, you can never forget that parents are still introducing their their kids of nowadays to this music. My my teenage assistant is seventeen. She wears Metallica shirts and knows Metallica. I know a lot of people wear Metallica shirts. I don't know them, but she also listens to Hall and Oates. What what year is it? So it's crazy that these kids are getting into music that you wouldn't think they would based on what's contemporary right now. But they get their first car. It's got a CD player. They can go scoop up three offspring CDs for twelve bucks. They're in love. So that, yeah, so that's what I was thinking is when we're looking at something like that is going, okay, well, I don't, if we weren't going to get rid of them, we thought about putting them on, we're doing a, a max sold auction, but sometimes you get less than a buck on those. So if we were going to try and put them out and we went, okay, if we can get two bucks a piece on these or three bucks a piece, if we can put six or seven things together for 15 bucks, it's, it's worth probably more than we're going to get at a garage sale. Cause then at a garage sale, you usually see them at a dollar or 50 cents. Cause that's why we bought them. Because they were a quarter, a dime, a dollar, or fifty cents. So that's a that, again, that's a great direction for us, Jason, to be able to look at it and say, okay, we may have twenty-five things. If I can find twenty-five alt uh, '90s things, we'll put that in a lot. If we see a lot of things out there that are lots of ten, we'll just split that into like three or four lots of ten. And I would rather make sixty bucks getting those out the door at fifteen bucks a pop. Yeah. Then have them sitting around here doing nothing. So what we'll try and do tomorrow, this is what he'll be doing. Yep. So look at this. Uh, sinister butterfly, 17-year-old just listening to Cranberries. You see, you would not expect a 17-year-old to be listening to Cranberries. You'd expect a 17-year-old to be listening to all those Korean boy bands right now because that's the hot thing. But Sinister Butterfly is a good parent teaching – Kid about everything. Don't make fun of me. You know, my BTS Jody, I don't know if you're getting, there is no certain number. It just depends on what you're working on. So you might end with a couple lots of ten or a lot of fifty. It just kind of depends on what you're working with. And you should take you know like we just took the whole thing, at least this section of it, and put it together. So one worked out to be six, and one worked out to be twenty. Yeah. So, but as you saw, we also had another whole tray that we were going to go, well, this whole tray, we now can at least get it. We've got a better grasp on it, number one. Yeah. Number two, we can start going quickly into wi uh, Wikipedia and go, okay, we can throw her. There's a Gwen Stefani right there. It's like, okay, girls, like we have a girl thing. We can throw it yep. in that. I, now you got the phone going too. Yeah. So, no, that's, it, again, it's been really helpful to go through. How many did we have in here all together? Like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 100. About 60, 75, almost 100 maybe that we had. That, 70 plus so that's a great way for us to go okay now we got rid of them we are we're hoping we can get rid of them now we know how to potentially group them and then there's always going to be one or two we probably get rid of that we shouldn't have like we missed that autographed one or something that we just threw in the wrong thing or but it's been a really <laughs> jody's got five trays like us yeah it just it's one of those things now we have we know people who are listing them really well and really quickly on amazon that Jason's taught too, and he's got 700? No, I have about 200. 200 now. on Amazon right now, but that's where we're putting the ones that are we're actually identifying. That's This batch came from the scan and go, none of these would be more than 60 or 70 or 90 cents back to us by the end of the time that we put it on Amazon. So we don't want something to sit on Amazon for six ninety nine for a year. We just want we want so, to uh, I do like Andrew's suggestion of <laughs> putting three uh, unrelated CDs together and try it on Max Soul. Now, I, I want to show you real quick that 
that Phoenix TX CD you you have just sold for uh, twenty bucks. Oh, I was gonna say sold for zero dollars <laughs> with the signature. With the signatures. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. So that's a good point. So yeah, even if you find a common CD that normally you'd be like, no, not worth it, but you see it's autographed, absolutely, always pull that out because you all you always get more money. And before anyone brings it up, you do not have to go out and get provenance and get proof that it was the actual bass player in Phoenix TX because there is no market in faking John the bass player of Phoenix TX autograph. There is a market in faking your Monroe's autograph, Mickey Mantle's autograph, for sure, but you don't have to prove it's real because no one's going to do that just to do it. It's real. Don't worry about it. And yes, we are going to try. That was one of the things we're prepping for the Max Old is we have done that randomly with records because again as jason knows from our la one of our other max olds <laughs> we just put things together that we thought oh this sounds like they belong together they both have an a in the title and we got amazing amounts of money for three completely unrelated things we did that in our last auction for lps and we actually did we cleared a couple of hundred bucks from lps that were just three in a lot or two in a lot or four in a lot that we badly put together, but we thought these are heavy metal. And Jason was looking at them probably saying, that's not heavy metal. That's like soft rock. It just has a heavy metal name. Just because it's called like Iron Teapot doesn't mean that it's like... <laughs> oh my God, I love Iron Teapot. <laughs> so again, no, it's it's really... And we're, I think what we'll do is we'll try this with this. And then Jason's going to be probably upset with us because we asked him a question the other day when we were thrifting and he told us not to buy something and we bought it anyway <laughs> and the reason we did was because this one said we wanted to try it so we were at another thrift store and we had a bunch of records that we found and it was a dj had thrown all these records into the 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 value village and we showed jay like i literally grabbed them because they had just come out and we grabbed like 90 of these things and there were and the Fox people there were it was like yeah it was like almost like the milking dead the zombies are around us like trying to take stuff out of our carts like and so i had this we rolled into another aisle and i said jason help me what do we do with these things and he looked at them and said nah it's the no how much are they i said three bucks they were actually two but it's like two bucks and he's like no and i was like but these look they just looked like they so should be it, it buy it, will John. he's doing a commercial for like Captain Obvious right now. Don't people like Lil John and his lime green thing? So Jason said, no, it's not worth your time or money, so pass on it. <laughs> this one says, oh, yeah, let's get them. <laughs> let's see if we can put these things into, like, a couple of DJ lots on Max Sold and see if we get some, like... All right, so how many did you buy at two bucks a piece? 70. So you invested $140. Oh, we had 20% off. Had 20% off. You invested one hundred and twenty dollars Canadian. You invested five thousand dollars American. No, 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 it's Canadian, so it's like yeah, twenty bucks U.S. Yeah, but to all right. So, so when's the next Max Soul going up? So I can watch this and be like, a it'll be show. this one will be up in about four weeks. Okay, so so make sure you let me know. We'll watch oh yeah, it. of course we will. But I mean, I really hope you make money. I, oh I, no, I, I do too. You know, I, again, I it's, 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 listen to the expert, the guy, he know, like you just saw, I don't know 90% of the people he was even talking about the amount of stuff that's in your brain. Now I know why you've got a beard because half of that trivia has to be in the beard too. Cause there's your, my head is bigger than yours. And I don't have that kind of trivia about music. I can tell you trivia about Barbie dolls and Saturday morning cartoons come out the wazoo, but you are Mr. Music. So thank you so much for helping us go through. I do this one that. section of stuff and giving us a much better grasp on what the hell we're going to do with the rest. Yeah. Group things. It's you are you are very very welcome. And for those of you who have not taken my course, flippingcds.com, just head over there. It's a two and a half hour webinar I did last year. It uh, it has got so much content. You're gonna have to watch it a couple times. But for the price I charge, you find one good CD like Craig said. It's already paid for it. And people who have taken it have made thousands of dollars off of my one webinar. It's a good jumping off point, especially when you're new to this. This little bonus, sorting it out, will definitely come in handy. And but especially yeah. at Christmas, too. As you said, oh, yeah. one of the big things is Christmas is a huge time for Christmas CDs. So when you learn about like what to do with Christmas CDs, you can make a ton of money on them. And you can also buy those bad ones that you just like, no, nobody wants that Charlotte Church. But... There is that 
Connie Francis one that is just like goes for fifty bucks every like that. And Jason oh, sells yeah. them every other week. We yeah, can't play that Connie Francis. Week, I have two Christmas web CD specific Christmas CD webinars in there. So all kinds of great content. If you're looking for any of it, just hit me up and I'll be happy to share with you. All right, boys, get those listed. Let's take a look at your listings when you get them up. I want to see them. I want to see good photos. And uh, what I would do, Rick, tomorrow, if you're listening, do one, send it over to me before you get too deep. I'll tell you if you're going the right direction or if you need to add more or not add so much. You know, I, I hate for you to overwork when you don't really have to. Yeah. Are there are there any listings that you would suggest have uh, or would be good examples? I, you know, I haven't done lots in a little while, so I don't know what's out there right now. Uh, but you don't have to go too nutty. You don't have to list every song and every CD in the lot. You know, you just need to get make sure that you kind of give it a category like the 90s alt rock, get some of the better bands in the title and work the rest of them in, into the item specifics. And that way it'll always come up in search. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. All right, gentlemen, have a wonderful evening. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Let me know if you've got any questions and I'll see thumbs you around. Give it thumbs up. Thumbs up. If there are thumbs yeah. up. <laughs> Thumbs up, Dino.